afternoon. I'm Evans. Uh, I'm the co-founder of CEO Missing Lab, uh, which uh, builds Sweet Network, uh, you may have heard about. Uh, so why are we building yet a different blockchain? So blockchain really hasn't really lived up to its uh, full promise. What well, we certainly haven't replaced the central banks, right? We certainly haven't uh, replaced currencies. Uh, the blockchains are still struggling with the various scalability and security issues, and the fees can be unpredictable on Ethereum and other blockchains. Uh, layer two blockchains just fragment, um, you know, kind of the fragmentation, introduce fragmentation, and still have the same reliability and security issues that we've been plaguing uh, previous infrastructures. So we build three. Uh, it's a new kind of blockchain infrastructure. It's a new architecture completely. Uh, what does it mean? So we're missing something here. Uh, looks a little bit funny. But the current generation of uh, blockchain is you know, smart contract platforms. Uh, this has allowed us to build you know, kind of new kind of applications, such as DeFi, as, as discussed by the previous man, uh, panel. But what if we generalize it further? to provide the kind of facility to kind of programming model to turn everything into a programmable digital asset. Uh, if you think about other kinds of pro, uh, applications that we're familiar with, they're always the concept of assets, uh, be in gaming or commerce or any kind of or social kind of networks. So what do developers need uh, to build these kind of applications? Well, assets are not static. We're all familiar with, uh, you know, kind of the last wave of NFT markets where people are trading monkey pictures. Uh, that, that lasts a while until it's no longer unique and new. Uh, assets are not static. They're dynamic. They change. Uh, every day you use, utilizing other kind of, different kind of applications, things change in them. So your infrastructure need to support that. Uh, people need to know ahead of time for developers how much I'm going to be paying if I'm running my product on your blockchain. And scalability has to be paired with performance. Uh, scalability itself is not performance. You need to be fast. That means latency as well as high scalability. And it's got to be elastic. And onboarding is one of the pain points for all the blockchain today. Uh, people have been telling me horror stories of trying to connect a wallet to a Web3 enabled game on TV, and it's not a pleasant experience. So there's a lot of work that needs to be done. Um, SWE came out a lot, a lot of years of research in distributed systems, in cryptography, in programming language. Um, there's a lot of things uh, very, very different uh, in our concept here. I encourage you to look at them. But the thing I want to talk about today is about onboarding, uh, specifically about the logging experience. Everybody here have uh, probably a Gmail account, uh, a Yahoo account, if you still found that many years ago. Uh, you, you're probably familiar with uh, you know, Apple logging, Facebook logging, all the social logging. It's a very, very familiar experience to all of us. And that is, there are billions of these accounts out there and everybody have them. It's great for discovery. You know your friends, email account, the product developers, or the services know their customers' email account. So really, we need to solve utilizing this existing information, your Web2 identity in a way, to solve some of the hardest problem that's onboarding uh, the experience for Web3 enabled products. It's not, the solution is not mnemonics. It's not asking develop, uh, users to create a wallet, uh, copy down your private key address, and s save your mnemonic on some papers or steel plates and store them somewhere. That is a barrier entry for 99% of the populations out there. Uh, accessibility is absolutely a problem uh, in this space, and we need to address it. So, to utilizing the Web2 credentials that everybody has already have without giving a lot of the benefits of decentralization away, we have something called ZK Logging. It's a native infrastructure, native primitive uh, for Sweet. It's utilizing OpenID uh, standard OAuth2 
plus the magic of cryptography to solve this onboarding problem. So it's designed to be internet infrastructure. It's going to solve a lot of the onboarding problem for mass adoption, and it's great for individual and business. What does that mean? Let's talk about it a bit more. The ZK logging opened the door for most people because everybody knows the experience of onboarding and logging to your, your Gmail account or any other account. So you break down that barrier of entry for 99% of the humans out there. And we're still not giving anything away. You are not relying on third party to custody your key. It's still a fully self custody, custodial. And that's a big difference with a lot of other solutions you've seen out there. Uh, you don't worry about that third party uh, that provide that, that feature for you, the custody, your key, NPC, or other kind of solution. If it goes out of business, do you still have access to your addresses, to your accounts? It's full, fully custodial. It's fully on-chain. Uh, it's completely privacy-focused. There's no link between your addresses and your, your email address from a service provider point of view. They don't get to know that. Uh, it's native support, as I say, and it's foundation for identity layer uh, that's going to become very, very powerful and very important down the road. So what's happening on chain and what's happening off chain? On the off chain, you're doing a open ID logging for the user. And then the server provide a zero knowledge proof to prove you have a proper logging you, that belongs to you. Then everything else will happen on chain, you're breaking the link between off chain and on chain. Uh, so on chain, the address is generated, linked to the application. If you're building a game, you use this to logging, apply some additional two-factor authentication salt, and you have a unique logging, but it's still discoverable from from discovery point of view because you know their email. Uh, so this allows user to view and manage their assets seamlessly. And the case, does it mean that we don't need to build wallets? No, uh, because the concept of wallet is still there, it's still important. People still need to manage their assets. But it's very important that now you can build this invisible wallet experience and then you know, do something different uh, with it. People don't want to put their email on ch addresses on chain, but they still want to be discovered. If you know joe at gmail.com, you can send something to them. That discovery is still there. Uh, but you don't necessarily need to know what their private key is. So that is the magic. For enterprises who already have a single sign-on solution, this is a perfect solution for them as well. For other solutions that don't need the concept of wallets, this is even better. Uh, because the onboarding experience is hidden. It doesn't have to be the first thing the customer have to deal with. The consumer don't have to deal with. You don't break the flow. They just log in and start enjoying using your applications. So we need to build, we need to raise the quality of, uh, of these applications and hold a higher bar for user experience. For business that want to build application, things on chain, but don't want to add additional tools, don't want to sign up uh, additional services, this is a very, very powerful primitive. And it's available on Suite today. And but business is build application for consumers. And consumers deserve better experience. And this is a solution for mass adoption. It's one of the many, many things that's to come for Sui. Uh, we're going to share a lot more about the power of ZK logging and all the, all the other things that you can build on top of with it. Uh, this is a gateway, and this is one of many, many things yet to come. Thank you so much.